Be a hero, man. You could be a hero. GoPro hero. Not all heroes wear capes. <sighs> they wear backpacks. Off to a great start. This is RC's 30 minute special for the whole enchilada trail in Moab, Utah. The whole enchilada is a 30 mile epic that is one of the world's most famous rides. Since the elevation loss over the whole trail equates to about 8,000 feet, mortal riders like myself are going to need a shuttle to get to the trailhead. And also learn from the fool, don't be the fool. Take a left right there on that single track and don't go down this dirt road because that is a bad idea, I'll tell you that right now. Also, the belts and contacts, that WE that you see right there, that stands for whole enchilada. It's not missed in the WWE, it's WE whole enchilada. I've only done the whole enchilada just a couple times. Therefore, I'm not an expert on this trail. However, Lost. I would highly recommend riding this trail in the fall when the lower canyons down closer to the town are in a hundred and bazillion degrees. So today, starting right at the shell drop, we are going to view the whole enchilada trail ridden in its entirety in this 30 minute special. We'll be starting off in the alpine forest of the LaSalle Mountains and we'll send it at home in the red sandstone canyons of the Porcupine Rim next to the Colorado River. And you All thought right. that a $30 shell ride was going to get you to the top of the Burrow Pass. Nope. You have a strenuous and sustained climb to tackle right out of the gate. Not to mention to add a little thin air to the equation and you'll be huffing and puffing all the way to the top of the Burrow Pass. Oh, We're looking at so about great. 800 feet of climbing in two miles. Also, keep in mind that this trail is extraordinarily popular amongst people from the entire world. And with four shell companies moving 100 mountain bikers into the area, it's not uncommon to see exceptional crowd sizes. Expect to set world records in games of mountain bike leapfrog, as well as wait in line to session some of the featured technical bits. I'd recommend catching the earlier shuttles if they're available and positioning yourself to the front of the line if you want to ride in solitude. Start on burrow. Avoid taking any early discretionary breaks and instead save them for later. This leaves the experienced rider with all the options for bombing the trail when you get to the top. And finally, a little bit of Captain Obvious commentary. It can be really, really cold up top, anywhere between 25 and 32 degrees. It's 11,000 feet, oh, yeah. crying out loud. Especially in the fall when you're talking about September, October, so bring a little light jacket or something. Well, it will warm up when you get closer to the bottom, so bring your layers. Just a heads up on this trail, you will get wet. There are a couple creek crossings and they are frigid cold. Like, I think the ground is kind of frozen. Kind of hit that, that's the one if he endo turn. Last time I rode this, it was running the water right down the middle right here. Wasn't supposed to storm till the afternoon, but once I got right to the burrow, it started getting really wicked. How's it going? My equipment bike hack for the film today are the new full suspension 
Revolution Grips, or Rev Grips for short. These things are super innovative and game changing, and they're basically designed around the idea that arm pump is what fatigues your hands. Rev Grips eliminate that. I know a few riders out there who have had multiple wrist surgeries, and they said that these things are the best thing to ever happen to grips since sliced bread, if that makes sense. I might have said that wrong. Anyway, after riding these grips, multiple rides, I'd definitely say they cater to everyone and every riding style out there because they're tunable. You can tune your grips. Unbelievable. But I'd definitely target them if you're interested for, for rides long down hills, especially the bike park. So it's all about fitting them to your preference. But at the end of the day, in this ride, my hands didn't even feel the slightest bit uncomfortable. That's a real testament to the grips because on rigid grips before, I had that problem. And don't worry, I'm just bringing these, these product reviews up. I don't get paid, I'm just doing it for fun. But anyway, I'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out there. Hey guys. Coming up to a creek crossing. You will get wet right here. And your feet will be cold. Oh, there's a bridge. Yo! <laughs> it's a little muddy right here, so but I don't really feel like wearing most of it on my bike again. <laughs> Ice, extraordinarily frigid. There's ice out here, and I tried to walk across the creek, and I dipped both feet in instead of just getting one foot wet. But the good part is, at least my bottom bracket's okay. I just changed it out. Don't feel like changing that again. bridge. I love it. In the description said anything about foliage. Whew. Yeah, I like it. Burp was a little bigger last time. You just can't make up these conditions for riding. So neat. Also, looking forward to getting to Hazard County where the oak, oak brush, the gamble oak will be pretty red. Oh, another splash. We're gonna take it slow. We're in just a little bit of a transition between Burrow Pass downhill and the Hazard County area. 
On your way out the back door of Burrow, you're going to get a few opportunities where the forest opens up so where you can collect some sweet views. A little bit of climbing, a little bit of descending. It's just really flat, but... It's kind of giving me a little bit of vertigo. All right, a little confusing three-way, actually. We got the sign right here. This hole in July is that way. Then we have a trail that goes hard on the left. And then you see the W, W E, W E, hole enchilada. Go straight, that's what you want. In my experience of climbing all of Colorado's 14ers, it's not uncommon to team up with other climbers along the way. The same applies to mountain biking. In today's ride, I'll be teaming up with a pair of women from Lake Tahoe. We'll part ways for now, but there are spoilers. We'll see them again later at the Porcupine Rim. Here we are. On top of Hazard County. Look at that sweet view. Welcome to Hazard County. We did the business on Burrow, but the day is short and it's time to move on. Once a rider arrives at Hazard County Trailhead, it's time to climb again through aspens and oak brush. The climb is tough and sustained, but it's short. It's pretty short. If the weather permits, the views from the Hazard County Trail are spectacular. Finally, you enter an area of cell coverage so you'll be able to make a call on whether you need to bail out or you can hit up your Instagram and send some pictures out there to the internet. Hazard is fast and flowy, most importantly, it's fun! Just keep an eye out for cows and all that they leave behind. Hazard County! If you're running a chest mounted, GoPro and gimbal setup, especially like the Evo SS, be sure to calibrate your gimbal when you get to a certain point because the temperature changes just too much for it usually. Good? <laughs> Don't worry, that, that part gets everybody, but it gets worse. <laughs> no riding adventure is complete without seeing a sweet wreck or four. In this case, we saw a stone from New Brunswick going over the bars with some chunky rocks. But don't worry, the stone was okay. I always recommend bringing your elbow pads, your knee pads, and focus on staying safe out there. Get out in one piece. Probably the further we go down, the, the greener the oak brush is getting. Is uh, the one guy behind you? Or? Yeah. Oh, he had a good wreck. Oh, did he? Did he yep. Whoop. Oh, you <laughs> yeah, I got him on the camera. <laughs> Oops. So we've wrapped up the Hazard County Trail and ready to move on to the Cocapelli section. At least this part's only three miles yeah. or so, instead of the whole 150 miles from Fruit to this part. But anyway, I digress a little bit. It's a double track road where you can get a lot of really, really fast speeds, but most importantly, if this place gets wet, it gets practically impassable. You'll have a 30 pound bike and it'll be 60 pounds and probably I don't know, five seconds, so stay off of it when it's muddy. The 
that's all good. After a short section where you're basically hauling down the double track Coca Pelle Trail, you're going to get caught up with what's known as the UPS Trail or otherwise known as the Upper Porcupine Single Track, in which you'll start kind of running a flat descent down into LPS. All right, moving along the UPS Trail. Upper Porcupine, single track. It's pretty flat here for the most part. You're not gonna get any huge descents, but the highlight of UPS is basically this massive sand snow wall that you can descend and it's just really, really sweet. Man, that's, that's a mountain bike in this trail. It, October's all about right there, those colors. And sure enough, I bet you got there. Oh, it's right here, I think. <laughs> Spicy. Kind of wraps up the highlights of UPS right there. It's a very short session trail. From UPS, we'll be moving on to the LPS trail, which is kind of the standard springtime drop off point if you're looking to ride out in Moab in around April, I'd have to say. Power lines say love. Woo! Long ways down. Still got a long ways back to the back to town. It's taking forever, all this filming. Now we've made it from the Alpine Forest of the Manti LaSalle National Forest in the LaSalles, and we'll be descending the legendary Porcupine Rim. In this particular part, we'll be descending the LPS Trail, going towards the Porcupine Rim single track. An epic ride not for the faint of heart. This sandstone cliff band descent is probably the hardest section of track on the entire Porcupine Rim. I can't get it because I can't, I mean honestly, I can't make this turn. But it is just super weird, real steep switchback, and then you gotta drop off this really steep sandstone cutout. And it's just, it's just a bit sketchy for me. There is another alternative line off this point, and that is called the Notch, just a little ways down from, from this particular area. Supposedly a lot harder. I never done it because I mean it's it's super sketch and lots of people like to walk it over there too, so keep that in mind. Yeah. Looks cool. Oh 
<laughs> yeah, that one hurt. <laughs> Go, <Grump>. Yeah. <laughs> When you move down the porcupine rim, your hazards change just a little bit. First hazard is going to be your riding style, so don't get hurt. Second is flash flooding. I've been in some wicked storms in Moab, so just stay heads up of what's going on around you. Get out of lightning, stay out of the drainages. That's what it's about. Oh, I'm in the wrong gear. This is like, yeah. At this point here, we'll be teaming up with the two women, Janelle and Elizabeth from Lake Tahoe. We'll be taking this trail down and finishing up strong. Oh, no. I have never seen so many flat tires in any trail anywhere, except for this double track section of the Porcupine Rim. So jack those PSIs up and ride extra careful. Make sure that you're not blown through all right your there. tubes along the rest of the ride. Gnarly and windy. Wouldn't want to have it any other way. Oh yeah, that's close. Oh yeah, I'm good. Not only is this fast double track section hard on tires, but it's also hard on rear derailleurs. So carry a few extra parts with you. In my case, I was able to hobble my bike out in the low gears without worrying too much about the rest of the ride. Finally, the last seven minutes will feature the ultra techie sections of Porcupine Rim. You thought the rest was boring before? Get stoked, get excited about the grand finale here because this is what this ride is all about. The whole enchilada wrapped up down here in the desert. By this point, your feet should hurt, your hands should hurt, but you're just getting started. You're ready to bomb this thing and have the time of your life. Enjoy the final couple minutes. Pretty hard to beat this ride when it's a good day and it's good weather. Super confusing. Oh, where, what am I, what was I doing? <laughs> I'll go right here.
something broke. I like real food. <laughs> Trying to wreck. Oh, had to do like a performer yoga pose right there on that. Yeah, get stolen. Nailed it. Oh. Yes. That thing. Uh oh. Okay, I might try it. Oh, look way. at this. Yeah, oh. oh, this thing. There you go. We're riding. Oh. Go be a hero. GoPro hero. Not all heroes wear capes. <sighs> they wear backpacks. Off to a great start. <laughs> I can't get that. Now that we're back to the river and the highway, it's time to wrap up the whole enchilada. We ate the whole thing today and cleaned our plate as best we could. I know watching the whole 30 minutes is going to be quite a bit for, for the average viewer out there to watch at one time, so I'll cut it up a little bit and try to make a 10 minute highlight video of the whole enchilada and release it shortly. And as I always say, please leave some hints, tips, and helpful tricks down in the comment section. I'll let you know what I think. This is Mountain Biking Gold. This is RC. We ate the whole enchilada today. No regrets. Cleaned our plates. We'll see you next time. Catch you on down the road. Namaste, my friends. Ooh.